Hey guys, it's Silver. One of you guys requested that I do a vlog on Japanese culture, but I'm actually going to do one on Okinawa culture since I'm in Okinawa. You're not going to get to see me very much on this video, but I put together a bunch of pictures and stuff for you guys, so I hope you enjoy it. The chain of islands that Okinawa is a part of are called the Ryukyu Islands, and I put a map up so you guys could see where it was in relation to mainland Japan. It's just south of Japan and they run all the way to east of Taiwan and Okinawa is right there in the middle and then I put up a zoomed in map for you guys so you could see up close Okinawa and that red circle there is where my base is. One of the first places that I visited when I got here was this place called American Village and it's a tourist attraction. There's like shopping and food places to go to and it's right on the coast and right along the beach is the seawall. Here Okinawa is prone to typhoons so the seawall is there to protect the city from flooding but you can still get to the beaches and everything and then there's also places where you can go like holes in the wall where you can go down the stairs and it's really easy to just walk out into the water and go snorkeling or scuba diving here. And then the entire seawall is covered with graffiti all the way down. And you can, there's a running path and like a little walking path that goes right along the seawall the whole way. And you can see all the graffiti. Some of it is really, really, really good. And some of it's like amateur graffiti. But it's really fun to look at. Another thing that you'll see in Okinawa is that the houses are solid to withstand the typhoons. So there, most of the buildings here are made out of concrete, and then like the apartment complexes and stuff, a lot of them are built on these like rock-solid pillars so that if it does flood, it's not going to get into the bottom floor of the hotel or apartment complex. All around town and all over the island, you will see these tombs, and inside of them are the cremated remains of several generations of the native people's families and they go there on a regular basis and they pray and they give offerings. I've seen uh, flowers, they'll leave incense and sometimes food. Um, some of the taboos that are associated with the tombs is that you're not supposed to point at them or speak loudly about the dead around them and you're not supposed to take photos of them without permission. It's also considered dangerous to desecrate the tombs in any way by um, doing graffiti or destroying any of the offerings that were left or approaching it at night or approaching it if you're not a family member. That's, that's considered to be extremely dangerous. After the families do go and do their offerings, they'll have a little picnic afterwards, which I put a picture up for you guys to see it. And then the most important year is the 33rd year after the person has passed away because that's when they believe that their spirit um, has joined their uh, ancestors' spirits. I've told you guys a little bit about the shisha dog already, but I'm um, going to go ahead and tell you guys a little bit more about it. Um, they're displayed at homes and businesses. It's a cross between a lion and a dog, and the open mouth one is to ward off evil, and the close mouth dog is to keep in the good spirits. And you'll see these all over town. Another big thing here in Okinawa is the beckoning cat, and sometimes you'll have just the little figures, and sometimes you'll have the ones that wave their arm, and it's a good luck charm for them. It's displayed mostly in businesses, and it's used for good fortune and money or success in life. Banyan trees are another big deal here. Ancient Rukyuan beliefs believe that the spirit that believe in spiritual power of trees. So they're everywhere and they even have restaurants that are named after them. And then this one that's in Naha that's built like it's in a banyan tree, which is really awesome. Some of the drinks that they have here, the more famous ones, is awamori, which is a distilled rice liquor, and it gets more expensive with age, and then once it gets over three years, it's called kusu, and it's aged underground or in caves. And then you have the habusaki, which is really popular here with our military members. 
you have to at least try one shot during your stay here. Um, but it's awamori based. It's made with this poisonous habu snake in the jar. And most of the time it's left in there. So you can buy it with the snake still in the jar. Or like in the bars they'll have it with the snake still in the jar. And then habu can have sex for up to 26 hours at a time. So Japanese believe that it will help sexually dysfunctional men by passing the snake's strength through drinking the sake. So that's why they drink it. One of the ancient instruments here is called the sanshin, which literally means three strings. And it looks like a snakeskin banjo, but these are everywhere downtown. And so I figured you guys might want to hear about it. And I actually have a little music clip for you to be able to hear what it sounds like. Also, there's the Isa drum dance, which is a Rukyu folk dance. Men and women dress in bright costumes and they play the drums and chant. And I got a video for you guys to watch, so here that is. The kimono is a traditional garment worn by women for special occasions and by men for casual events inside the home. If the woman is single, it's called a furisod, and there's pattern all over the entire dress. And if the woman is married, it's called a tomisod, and the design is only up to their waistline. And these pictures are for you guys to see what they kind of look like. Service in Japan is so much better than so. Americans need to take note. They have a service button so that if you need something at your table, you just push the button and the waitress comes to your table. And then they bring out hot towels before the meal for you to clean your hands. But it's rude to wipe your face or neck with it, so don't do that. Um, you, you're not supposed to stick your uh, chopsticks upright in your rice or noodles. Um, you're supposed to lay them flat. And if you're in a place where you sit on a tatami mat, you, you're supposed to take off your shoes and then usually you're not supposed to tip in Japan but on this island they're really accustomed to the American military so some places do accept tips they'll have this little tray that you're supposed to put your money on to pay for when you go up to the counter and it's considered rude to just hand them the money so if they have a tray there you want to make sure that you put the money on the tray instead of handing it to them and then anytime an Okinawan or Japanese person says thank you, they are going to bow to you slightly, and it's polite to bow back. Wax on, wax off. Wax on, wax off. Breathe in, breathe out. Wax on, wax off. Thanks for watching guys. I hope you enjoyed it. If there's anything that I missed that you wanted to hear about, go ahead and let me know and I'll either reply in a message or I'll do a video response. And I just wanted to let you guys know that I did mail out the five subscription winner packages today so you guys should be getting those here in a couple weeks. Alright, thanks for watching. Bye! I'm only getting started. I won't back out. It's time I'm